All right, so these are good looking knives. But one of the things that really sets it off is going to be that little brass pin that's in the handle. Now, when I made a lot of custom knives, I love pins. Man, I put 10, 15 pins in a handle. They look just awesome. I love them, but they just don't love me because they're a pain in the hind end to make a lot of them. See all them pins in there? That is called a cup of pain in the butt. But I have a little bit of tool today. A little bit of tool. I'm, I have a little tool today that's going to help you make these pretty uh, pretty easily if if you are lucky enough to have a big ass bandsaw. Now I know I know most of you are out in the garage and this is not going to apply to you. But if you have a bandsaw, it, you know if you're getting into knife making, you're starting to get in production. Some of you are lucky enough to have it, and I want to at least give you a concept of how to make a tool to help with everything. So check this out. So I have a little fence here, and this fence has been set to about an inch and an eighth, which gives me just a little overlap from both sides. And I have here with me, this is bronze brazing rod. Now, if you do any type of welding, uh, any of your welding store will have these guys. You buy it by the pound, and there's a lot of one inches in it. These are three-foot three, uh, three foot pieces, so this is 36 plus 36, that is 72 possible pins out of this piece, not counting your kerf. Now, the problem is, is this is a bandsaw, and it's a pretty, pretty big blade. Uh, you can, most people try to cut these either with like a hand cutter, which leaves a really nasty edge. It's just... There's just not a great way to do this, but let me show you this cool thing here. Now, if I kind of just put these in here and try to carve it, it's going to be a mess. These things are going to grab, they're going to spin, they're going to bind and, and flip everywhere. It's going to be a bad day. So, what I have made is a stick. So, this is a very fancy stick. This is stick and leather. This is almost something that could come out of one of them uh, movies you buy late at night in the, movie, in the uh, hotel. But... You can see what's happened here is that we have a slit here, and this is actually the measurement from the blade to the fence. Let me show you. So you can see that this actually slides into there, and you can see that we have a groove cut in, and that groove accepts these rods. So basically, you get this bad boy going, rods go in, and now, because you have this, you have a way to actually push on the rod and if you keep a good grip on this side they won't spin and they cut and it's no problem now the problem is here is i only got two hands see this hand this hand does stuff this other hand see it's holding the phone so we got a bit of a problem so give me just a second i'm going to show you guys how this works hang on what are you doing what do you got better better uh put that down here you're gonna be famous hold that all right, so let me start this bad boy up. Come around on this side. Everybody on the internet wants to see that action. There you go. Work. And what can happen? You just turn it over and two perfectly sized pins fall out. Thank you, sir. Now, this blade is dull as all get out. That's why I didn't push too hard on that end of it. This, uh, it is very much time for this blade to be changed. But you can see we have two nice pins very quickly. So, cool tool for the day. Uh, 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 a flick and flabber. That's what we're going to call this. It's a flick and flabber. It's a flick and flabber uh, from Trenton Tie to help you make knife pins. You guys have a great day.